Last this movie time is the we watched a movie. Cinematic it is. It, it really, really is. is. There's just so many bad elements to it. The best description I have ever heard, and I continue to repeat, is it's like an alien came to Earth and was only ever described movies. Right. Never actually saw one and aspired to be that. He wanted to put, like, human experience, but he didn't know how. Right. And that's what this entire movie is. This entire movie is the first half of a romantic thriller with, like I say, other random elements that just don't either get seen all the way through or just don't fit. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of We Watched a Movie. It's Cassidy and Finn. We just got through watching Disaster Artist. And which, you know, we talked about The Room before, we are gonna talk about that now. So Cassidy, I'll go ahead and let you start off since you have a lot to say about it. Oh man, so much. Okay, first of all, I've gotta preface this again. Please do not watch The Disaster Artist until you see The Room, so you have a frame of reference of what's going on and why and how and such and such and such. Anyway, so I previously in the other video mentioned that I was a fan of the movie greatly and I had actually read The Disaster Artist, well, read Audible is a great, wonderful thing. Um, this video is not brought to you by Audible.com in any way, by the way. <laughs> it is a great and wonderful thing, especially if you, if you know. drive long hours. It's fantastic. <laughs> anyway, so having read the book i'm okay i described it earlier as reading the watchman falling in love with it and watching the movie and just being just you know you, but you know that feeling no, you just sit it. there and it's it. deflated yeah. and it's so it like the beginning i it's was really the way i was about dark tower yeah definitely so the things you love and then you go and you see it and i honestly <laughs> do i love it because it is a behind the scenes of a real weird person who made a real weird movie that should have never made it as big as it did. Mm -hmm. Like, it's an anomaly. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the fact is, is like, okay, so in The Disaster Artist, it explains a lot more in detail, actually, the length of time, um, why tensions were high, including the fact that though Greg Sestero was the first pick, he said no to the role originally because it would ruin a career. Mm -hmm. And it kind of did. He right. can't really do anything else without being, oh, you, you look for your Mark. Right. Yeah, hey, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. hi, Mark. Oh, hi, yeah. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. it's, it's one of those things where it didn't show the tensions. It didn't show how, you know, the, again, the length of time, because it wasn't just back to back to back. It wasn't a bromance, really. It was a love-hate relationship um, between two people who randomly found each other that it ended up working. Their friendship ended up working. It shouldn't have, but it did. Greg Sestero knows more about Tommy Wiseau than like anybody. He lived with them. Not as quickly as uh, the movie, the disaster artist portrays, because there was a time that Greg lived alone. And then Tommy moved in with hardships because he was like, oh, I'm gonna try acting again. It didn't mention that Tommy ran his own business um, where he sold knockoff like clothing. It didn't explain. Like, there was way more to Tommy Wiseau than what they what they portrayed, and there was way more to Greg Sestero than they portrayed. And it, it's really they left out really pivotal pivotal pieces like fights and aggression that were on set for the length of time. They left out previous cast members who had essentially quit the filming because of what Tommy was doing, which was BS, mm -hmm. and that was previously filming uh, Greg Sestero and not filming. Um, them, but pretending he was, mm -hmm. uh, which really rubs people the wrong way. So I think my issue is, is it was nice. It was definitely a Franco and Franco, Franco brother, bro, you know, bonding. It was a bonding movie between the Franco brothers disguised as Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestero because maybe they did find a brotherly understanding in the disaster artist. Everyone perceives things differently. And so, like, that might what be a, what they found in the disaster artist. I found out that Tommy Wiseau was a big ass, but he kind of had no idea he was being an ass. He was like um, Steve Carell in The Office, who's mm -hmm. just a big baby. Right. Doesn't understand right. he's a big baby, and it continues to be. Mm -hmm. I have not read or listened to the disaster artist, the book. Okay, so, you know, keeping that in mind. I'm coming at this from just the perspective of it as a film and what story it as a film was trying to tell. No. And at the bottom line end of the day, that movie is telling a story of friendship and of perseverance 
through through all obstacles and and just shameless perseverance because mm-hmm. that's what Tommy Wiseau is about. Okay. He is about shameless perseverance and 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 you know he may have been a on set and everything, but at the end of the day, he brought a lot of people along for a wild ride that they will never forget for the rest of their lives. He's a weird cat, dude. He oh, is yeah. a weird... He's I an mean, alien. I've seen enough interviews of him oh. and people talking to him in reality. He's a weird cat. But he also seems like he really does kind of care about people. And like he is, at core, a good person to a degree, I yeah. think. They're, at the end of the day, trying to tell a story about friendship and about overall perseverance in the face of greater odds. And and when you get down to that, it's kind of like when Peter Jackson adapted the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. He had to go, okay, what is this story? Well, this story at the end of the day is Frodo and Sam getting the ring to Mordor and throwing it into the Mountain of Doom. So then what do we do with the rest of all of this grand amount of story that we have to get to that point. Well, we have to pare it down to where if it's not kind of pushing that central story ahead, then it goes. So a lot of those moments were probably not pushing that central narrative of the two of them Mm -hmm. and this unlikely friendship, because they still showed it as an unlikely friendship. They did. I still think they achieved that in what they did. and again, Tommy's perseverance and his just sense of no quit and yeah. fearlessness. When you, if they weren't related to that, then it had to go, you know. And some of that stuff would Fair naturally enough. have to go in order. Plus time, you know. There, there's that issue as well. I mean, what that movie was about an hour and a half, yeah, an hour and forty-five minutes. Yeah. So you know, it's you got to fit it into this timescape, and you can't. Like if it's just not related and it or not, it's only tangentially related, but it's dragging things down, it's got to go, you know. So I think really that's where the rubber meets the road mm-hmm. on probably a lot of your issues with the movie. Yeah. Um, whether or not that is a detriment or a boon or whatever, I can't say because again, I haven't really read the book, yeah. and so I, I can't come from that perspective. I can only come from the perspective of having watched the movie The Room, watching having watched his end result. And then watching this movie retelling of the journey to get that movie made. Um, one thing that I did notice that I wondered if you noticed at all that I thought was rather interesting. How many comedians and comedic actors oh, yeah. are in that movie Holy crap. playing non-comedic mm-hmm. roles, really? Like, there's a lot of people that, like, okay, the one guy, the guy with the funny sunglasses who um, who threatens to kick Tommy. Oh when, yeah. When when, the, yeah. when he's bad, when he's mean to the women and whatever, um, that dude has been in like a ton of oh, yeah. for one Adult Swim things and like all kinds of other comedic stuff. He was on Comedy Central for a good number of years doing stuff on there, um, and like he is putting in some real acting in some of those yeah. scenes in that movie. And that was one thing that I really kind of like. I wonder if that was a choice specifically by the Franco brothers and by James Franco in that. This movie is people who are non-comedic actors trying to play serious film that ended up being comedic mm-hmm. in the end just because of the way that it was made and the person Story that made it. Storyline too. Right, and the person that made it because of what they wrote and everything else. The um, It makes me wonder if they intentionally used comedians playing non-comedic roles to portray the reality of where of how this movie was made in order to flip that and kind of that be a little bit of an artistic twist on it. Um, it certainly seemed to me to come across like that might have been something they were doing. I don't know if that you know, you know was something you picked on, up honestly, on at all. Or... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, not as in-depth, but mm-hmm. I did notice kind of a similar, but again, yeah. not as yeah. in-depth. And I mean, like, like Seth Rogen, thing. man. He's not really See, necessarily waka waka waka. Yeah. He's not fuzzy burying it up Mm-mm. like he usually no, does. No, he's a... And he's putting in serious yeah. work in this movie. I mean... You know, I, I think the thing is that I probably need to go see it again and mm-hmm. look at it from a different perspective. I think right, the, the perspective right. I took it in was this is a biography. Yeah, yeah, and you were doing a compare and contrast. And I was of doing a compare and contrast. And I, I think I missed out because I was doing the compare and contrast. I was. And the times that I was really able to get out of that compare and contrast were done so well that they're so memorable. Mm-hmm. They, the beginning scenes were just, just like the movie where he's just like Tommy. Well, he has yeah, playing no, Hamlet say, in the okay, overdramatic. Yeah, 
Another Even, thing, like, James oh, Franco disappeared into Tommy Wiseau. Oh yeah, he I could tell. He became Tommy Wiseau. Which like, is a terrifying it, place to be, I'm no, sure. No, no doubt. But at the same point, on the flip side of that, I almost think that his brother did Dave did more work mm -hmm. because he's playing a real guy who's having to react mm -hmm. to a cartoon, to a human yeah. cartoon. <laughs> and James Franco just had to play a human cartoon. Yeah. Whereas Dave Franco had to be just a regular guy being the straight man to this. Yeah. That's a lot harder work, man. And Fair hats enough. off to Dave Franco, with the exception of that beard. And that if that's awful. his real beard, that's sad. I really because hope that thing not. looked that's like so it was bad. fake. It looked fake as hell. Oh so, man! But like, but like back a to lot what you of were the, uh, But yeah, I think probably I need to go see it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And actually take that into like the whole actual story, not mm -hmm. it being a biography, right. not it being a, him writing the story of himself with Tommy, because mm -hmm. that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. And I, so I think. Yeah, I lost out because uh, because I was comparing and contrasting. Right. But I think, and maybe that's what happens with a lot of film anyway. Mm -hmm. If there's already something published and Definitely. something done, no, no I think people are so busy comparing and contrasting. So maybe Hollywood's not okay. Hollywood, you know, it, it maybe the film isn't as bad as we think. We just compare it too much, or it is I just as it, bad and needs new original ideas. Well, but God damn it! I think at the end Sorry. of the day, when you get to Tangents. a when you get to a translation of a previous work, what you have to come down to is does it capture the heart and soul of that original story? And and is it, you know, is it getting all of the things that that original across, you know, thematically and 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 as far as the story goes mm -hmm. of what that original work was trying yeah. to get across. The the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings trilogy is one of the best examples of that. And I know I use that example a lot, but it really is because at the end of the day, the things that, that he's pushing thematically in those films are the same things that Tolkien was pushing thematically in those books. The Dark Tower is a horrible example because at the end of the day, the themes that they're pushing in the Dark Tower film are completely anti what mm -hmm. was being pushed in the book. So it's like, is how can that be a good translation when... You know, you're not pushing the right things. And so I think what you need to look for in your next viewing of it is, is it pushing what the overall theme of the book was? And and if it's not, then yes, I think it's a bad translation, you know. Um, but if it is, I think you got you still got a good, you know, piece of art and a good translation. Yeah. I mean, I love it. I mean, just because, you know, books and everything and because how I view Tommy, it's right. still really, like, it's so bad. <laughs> but it's so good. Like, I know, it's, I know. It's, it's so, fascinating. On the whole, uh, com comedians, mm. maybe the room was something that influenced their careers. Maybe. Maybe it wasn't them picking them to play these roles, but yeah. them going, hey, I'd really like to play this role. That would actually make a because lot of sense. Because it allows them to act outside of themselves because well, the typecasting is hard it, on yeah, actors. Yeah, it would also make a lot of sense when I think about it because if I think about a lot of the comedic actors that are in that movie, that are in the roles mm -hmm. in that movie, they, I think, are in a lot of stuff that is known for that awkward comedy. Yeah. So there may be something to that. The end scenes right before the roll oh, of the yeah. credits. Yeah, when they the comparing compare contrast. Yeah. of the scenes. They really did a good job of were mimicking so them, incredible. They it was really like did. I was at first I was like, oh crap, which one's which? And then of course I was like, oh that one's yeah. obviously yeah. Tommy. Yeah. And that one's obviously James not. Franco, you know. Right. Um but the the imitation of them was so Very almost good. spot on yeah. in the actors that were put in there. It was it was yeah. beautiful. So it has its moments that make it go, oh, that is a really worth movie. a view though. Ninety three percent Rotten yeah, Tomatoes versus the what that. was it a thirty something? Thirty something. Oh, yeah, on, for, uh, for, for the room. room. So or something like that. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's getting its recognition it deserves. And and you know at the end of the day, Tommy was so kind of wins. Yep. All right. Signing off. Yeah, that's been another episode of We Watch a Movie. We'll see you guys next time. Y'all keep watching movies. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching that episode of We Watch a Movie. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to all of our videos. Be sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Our videos are over here to the left. Make sure you click on those to watch more. And don't forget to click the bell icon so it'll let you know when we post more stuff. Thanks for watching.